Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be episode 15 of the Caterpillar D2 5J1113 diesel engine assembly series. And I already tried in episode 15 and it turned into a disaster. I was in too much of a hurry and it had inaccuracies in it. And I decided just to scrap that because even for anyone coming along after the fact, it wasn't really going to be great even for reference. So we're just starting over. If you guys need to skip ahead a little bit because you know you've seen all this, if you keep up with the channel, I'm not going to hold it against you, but we'll do a streamlined uh, disassembly of this D3400 oil pump and then hopefully get something put together and get this installed in the engine yet today. So for a brief rundown of what's on the bench here and how it works, we'll start with the oil pump drive unit. Uh, it mounts to, it attaches to, I should say, the top of the oil pump just like that. The gear on this end engages with the camshaft. That turns the drive shaft in the drive unit and the slot in the end of that shaft engages with the tang on top of the pump and powers the pump. Now the pump itself is kind of a two-in-one unit. The upper portion is what Caterpillar calls the auxiliary pump. There's a small set of pump gears behind this upper body right here. Um, it's basically a scavenge pump to draw oil that's collected at the front of the pan and return to the main sump. That's why we have this uh, front suction bell and this pickup tube. Those auxiliary pump gears pull oil from the front into this upper portion of the pump body and exhaust it around this standpipe and it just runs down the outside of the pump. Now the primary pump gears are down in this lower section and the primary pickup screen, which is all in the main sump of the oil pan along with the pump itself, draws oil in and your primary pump gears are what create the pressure. Uh, oil under pressure is fed into this chamber here where there's a pressure relief valve, a spring, and an adjustable thumb wheel. Uh, you want to basically just adjust the pressure of that uh, spring tension on the poppet so that you get around 30 PSI on a warm engine at normal operating speed. So any excess pressure is exhausted out this hole into the main sump. The rest of the pressure will go up this standpipe and will be uh, carried on its way to the rest of the engine for lubrication purposes. Now to begin taking things apart, I'm just going to disconnect this front suction bell and pickup tube from the pump. And we're gonna set this aside for now. I'm not coming back to it in this video, but it'll be probably addressed in the next video. Um, the 1113's original engine uh, had a lot of water in the pan, it froze, and this uh, pickup tube and, and uh, front bell incurred some damage because of that, but we'll visit that next time. It has no real bearing on what we're going to do with the pump today. And the oil pump drive unit is another piece that's not going to take a lot of time today. Um, I'm not going to take it apart because I really don't need to. There's really no play in that shaft. Everything's good. I was able to thoroughly uh, flush this out, get it clean. Um, so really doesn't pay to take it, uh, take it apart at all. If you were going to take it apart, the gear is pinned onto the shaft at the top right here. You can see that pin is peened over on both sides. Uh, you would uh, remove that pin, gear would come off the shaft, shaft would come out the bottom of the housing. And really the only other thing is uh, we have a replaceable uh, bronze bushing up in the top up there, but nothing here really warrants any, any kind of repair at all. So we're just gonna leave that the way it is. Now to disassemble the pump, first step is to remove the suction bell. Two bolts hold that on, pretty simple. And then the next thing I'll do is get the uh, pressure relief uh, assembly out. We have the little detent here that holds uh, tension on the thumb wheel, keeps your settings intact. There's just two machine screws. Hold that to the top, thumb wheel threads out. There's a little bit of spring tension behind it, but it's not bad. There's the wheel spring and inside is the the poppet valve now there are four nuts each with a lock that go around the um, perimeter of the upper portion of the pump remove all those and then there are two studs here and here that need to be removed they're kind of a slip fit between all these sections and they aid greatly in the alignment of the assembly keeps your uh, your clearances all proper and everything in place. Pull this one out. There we go. Now that those are out, you can flip it over and the base section comes off. Just like that. The other two studs remain in there as well as the idler gear shaft. 
What we're looking at now are the primary pump gears. So the idler gear can just be pulled right out and the primary pump body just comes right off. And the primary drive gear is keyed and pinned onto the shaft. You can leave that intact for now. Next step is to remove the base from what's left of the pump. And um, it's normally a press fit onto this little standpipe right here. Um, the manual will have you uh, grip this, uh, this intermediate piece. They call it the separator. They'll have you put that in a vise and then they, they just say to carefully remove the, uh, the base from the pump assembly. I don't like to clamp this in a vise. I don't want to displace any metal, create any birds that might come back and haunt me. So I just usually take a small driver that fits well into the end of that uh, standpipe and just knock that out by hand. Little driver. Put it in that tube. Gently tap. With the base free from the pipe, that just gets pulled off. And here are the auxiliary pump gears. Again, the idler can just be pulled out. Uh, the body just pulls off and the auxiliary drive gear is keyed to this shaft. I've got the key out of it. Here that is. And that can be removed without a puller. Um, the pump drive shaft can then be removed from the separator and you have a fully disassembled pump. Now to assess condition of the pump, obviously first step is a thorough cleaning and a uh, Good visual inspection, make sure you don't have any burrs on any of your mating surfaces. There's not gaskets between most of these pieces, they just rely on the finely machined surfaces to seal, so you want to make sure all that's good. Um, we can check to make sure that the pump gears have not started to wear into the, uh, the header plates yet. All this stuff is actually pretty good. It's normal to see a little bit of witness uh, marking like that. Fingernail test, it passes that. I know we're far from scientific, but you know. Uh, Manual spec is actually pretty generic on this. The only thing they give you is oil pump clearance between gears and separator plate, two to four thousandths of an inch. So the way I determined that was uh, first you need to, like I said, make sure you don't have any wear that's going to increase your end clearance on any of these plates. Um, what I did was take the, uh, the mic and just uh, check the thickness of, I did the separator plate and I did the top plate. You cannot do the bottom plate like this because you don't have a flat surface on the other side, but basically measure uh, a portion of the plate outside of the wear surface and then go and measure the wear surface itself see if there's any kind of a difference there and even on the vernier scale on the uh, the mic I could maybe pick up one ten thousandth of an inch uh, difference between the gear uh, area and then outside of that so that's on this pump that's really nothing to worry about considering you got a generous two to four to deal with anyway. So if you can assume that your surfaces are all flat, it becomes a lot simpler after that. Basically take another mic, try and do this with one hand, and you just check uh, the uh, height of your pump gear and then reference that against the overall height of the body that it rides in. Subtract the differences and basically I'm running a very comfortable three thousandths on the, uh, the primary pump gears and the auxiliary gears. So technically we're within spec. Now other pumps I've been into also give you diametrical clearances to check between the pump gears and the bodies. Uh, the D3400 manual doesn't seem too worried about it, but I'll just uh, stick a feeler in there during reassembly because I just want to kind of have an idea what that is too. To reassemble now, we'll begin with uh, putting the pump drive shaft back into the separator and you can pre-lube with whatever type of assembly lube, grease, slash oil you prefer. Install the key for the auxiliary pump drive gear and then that gear goes on the shaft. Once you're happy with how that fits, the body can go on and idler gear drops in. Just like that. And then the pump body. That large hole surrounds the standpipe. Feed that drive shaft up through like that. And make sure the standpipe just starts to engage that hole that it presses into. Now to seat this standpipe, the method I'm going to use is a 3 8 bolt. Now this is just one of the methods you could use. You could use a small arbor press, hydraulic press, what have you. Um, this is going to be the most convenient for me and probably the easiest one to do in front of a camera. So um, we'll run the bolt in through from this direction here and you can see 
That standpipe is a little bit above the finely machined surface of the separator, so that should keep the bolt from marring any of the uh, surface that I want to keep in pristine condition. And I just threw a little bit of grease back here, pop a couple flat washers on there, and then we'll just uh, thread a nut on. And with a couple wrenches, that will draw this entire assembly together. Just like that. Check for a good spin and proceed. Primary pump body goes on next, followed by the idler. Just distributing some uh, assembly lube between the uh, the gears and the pump right now. Get everything with a good coating on it. And uh, might as well address the elephant in the room at this point. Uh, kind of the reason, well, the main reason I scrapped the last video was I incorrectly described oil flow through one of these pumps as going between the gears. And that's, that's anything but true. Pretty much exhibits a complete lack of understanding of physics at the most fundamental and basic level. Um, what they do is they actually turn opposite of one another, carry the oil between the gear teeth and the pump housing. And when it gets over here, it cannot go back between them. So it has to go down that standpipe, out the top of the pump and onto the engine. So I tell you, it's been my job for the last 20 years to understand things like that. And I still can't believe I got that wrong. Now I've had some I've said some real zingers in my day, but that pretty much takes the cake. If I did that at work, I'd probably be pulled right off the uh, engine line and put back in the corner changing tires again, which honestly for the ridiculousness that they're building into modern engines these days, I'm not so sure that wouldn't be uh, a promotion, but we're getting off track again. Anyhow, got that out of the way. The pump base with uh, two of the four studs and the idler gear shaft can now be installed. that. Install the two alignment studs through the body. I lightly oiled each one. Don't really need uh, grease on these. There we go. Flip it over. Install the four nuts with new locks properly positioned beneath them. And before you make it permanent, you want to uh, make sure you have a good spin. There's no bind, there's no clash. So the easiest way to do that is just to uh, set the drive on top. Check it by hand. Sounds like a pump and it spins well. So with the pump verified and the locks all folded over, the pressure relief can go in next. And we'll just start this thumb wheel. I'm going to put it about halfway. Uh, there might be a more scientific way of doing it, but a question that came up last time was, uh, how do you readjust this? Do you have to take the oil pan off, yada, yada? Uh, there's two different colors, uh, one on the side of the block or one on the side of the oil pan that will afford you access to this wheel. So it's really not that inconvenient. Now I'm just finishing the installation of the detent. It goes over that thumb wheel. Test it out real quick. It does its job. And finally, to complete the assembly, the uh, main suction screen goes on, suction bell. Pretty simple, uh, two bolts, each again with locks. I've made a new gasket for that. So with those last two bolts tight and the locks folded, that completes the assembly of the D3400 oil pump. And I want to get this uh, put in the engine yet tonight. So drive unit's been prepped, assembly lube on the gear. I have uh, force fed oil into all of the feed holes that lubricate that shaft in the housing and that bushing. Um, new gaskets have been made. Bolts are ready to go with new locks. With the base gasket in place, start this down into the block and we need to mesh with the camshaft. Even though there are five holes in this plate, only two bolts will go through this one for now. The other three are what uh, hold the oil pump. So we'll get those started there and there. Okay, we're tight on those two bolts. Now, a couple things I want to just run through real quick before we set the pump in on top of this. If you look at the witness mark from the old base gasket, you can see that it is going to go awfully close to that tab. 
and to that tab. So it's going to be in our best interest to bend that one and that one to avoid any possible interference with the oil pump base when we go to set that on. That would really be unfortunate if we had to ruin these locks because we had to bend a couple more tabs to fit the pump on. Next, just out of an abundance of caution, I just want to check the drive. We've got backlash right there, but I'm just going to pull this uh, idler gear basically disconnect this uh, gear train so I can just manually turn just the camshaft and we can make sure that everything spins nice, gears mesh well. Go a couple revolutions with it anyway just to make sure everything seems good. And it's good. So, we can make those locks permanent, set the pump on after that. Okay, locks folded, oil pump base gasket in place. I've got some assembly lube on all of the drive tangs. So we'll set the pump on. See how hard it is to align everything. Seems like it dropped in place. Okay, once again, pump bolts tight. I haven't folded locks till we do the test spin. And all is good. Still sounds like a pump. No stiff spots. Turns very well. So, fold these locks, put that gear back on, retime the engine, we'll be done. All right, just finishing up here, double checking the marks. I with the I, C with the C, and the F with the F. Definitely don't want to have that wrong. That would really be unfortunate. But finally we have the oil pump gone through and in place, fully installed. Like I said, still have to address that pickup tube and front suction belt. We'll probably do that next time, but man, am I ever ready to put oil pumps to bed. I've kind of had my fill lately, and this is probably uh, yet again a 20 minute video dealing with an oil pump but I had to go back and set that first part right sorry if it seemed like a rerun but I was not going to let myself have any peace at all until I made it right made the necessary corrections and ended up with something that I wasn't completely disgusted with so thanks for tagging along thanks for supporting the channel thanks for watching as always everyone I appreciate it tune in again next time we'll keep throwing parts into that thing